And I'm so excited to see Kathleen's presentation when we practiced on Monday. Um, it was just so fabulous. I can't draw a stick figure, but she's kind of inspired me. So I think you guys are going to love this. Kathleen is currently the fifth grade art teacher at Manford Elementary. Um, I've had the privilege of visiting one of her classrooms and her students just love her and we do as well. So Kathleen, I'm gonna let you take it away. Um, I am Kathleen Walker and I teach pre-K through fifth grade art at Manford. And uh, it's a ball. Uh, those uh, pre-K students just about wear me out. They've trained me well. I um, have done this assignment, I've done this project with my first graders, but I honestly have not done it with my pre-K kids. Uh, we are working on holding crayons correctly, cutting lines. We started the start of the year with cutting straight lines, and then we worked to curve lines and scissor safety and putting the lids on glue, you know, those things that pre-Ks need to do. But this I have done with first grade, and I am teaching you the first grade lesson today. You can also do this um, as a paint party and it's a lot of fun, but it's a little bit different when you work with grown-ups. So um, first thing I want to tell you is that this lesson is a really good project for bulletin boards and um, a, a project that can be ongoing because you're going to draw a pickup truck, but what you put in the back of that pickup truck is completely up to you. And the last couple of years I've used the um, fruits veggies and nuts oh my and it has if you've not used that uh, it used to be a book but now it's a it's on the website but if you've not used that you've got to check it out because it has poetry it's got writing activities it has games that are hilarious it's got and my kids love them it has um arts things crafts things and um lots of arts and crafts and recipes. Anyway, it's a really, really fun tool that uh, you don't have to do the whole thing. You can go through and look at the table of contents and it's divided by project type and it's just a lot of fun to use and you'll get a lot of information out of it. So um, if you have with you today a penny and a piece of paper, <clears throat> excuse me, I can't see you to tell if you're doing this or not, but um, if you have a penny and a piece of paper, we are going to start by turning our paper landscape. I always tell my kids that this is horizontal, that it's going side to side because they need to know that word horizontal uh, for testing and for math and just for their future horizontal. And um, I relate that to landscape because they know that from the computer. And uh, so we're going to turn our page horizontal and we're going to pretend that there's a line going straight down the middle and then if you divided that straight down the middle and you divided each of those halves, another math word, divide those in half, then um, about two or three finger spaces from the bottom and about half of the half or a fourth of the way in on the page, we're going to trace around our penny. Now, if you are an adult and you don't have a penny, because teachers never have any money, right? Uh, just draw a small circle. We're doing the same thing on the other side, and this is going to be the hubcap on our pickup truck. So the truck that we're drawing, I think you can see over here, looks something like this. The next thing that we're going to do is use a finger space, and on that finger space, I'm, here, I'm gonna draw this a little bit bigger. And one of the things I always tell my students is keep it light till you get it right. I say it over and over. I'm drawing with a black Sharpie, I can't erase. But you're drawing with a pencil and you will be able to erase if you don't press down too hard. But if you press too hard and you go to erase, it doesn't erase very well. So um, we have drawn our circles. Now we're going to use our finger and you can use a pinky finger or an index finger. I just lay it beside my penny mark on each side, and make a little mark, maybe do one here and here. And this tells me how big to make my tire for my truck. And then I can just join these together. If you want to make more marks, you can. So I've got my mark here. And this little measuring tool I keep with me all the time. It also helps if I need to point so you don't have to have a ruler for this. You don't have to have a lot of props. 
you could make circle stencils. I have uh, cup lids and jar lids. I've got a big basket of round circle temple templates that I use in my classroom. But this you can just measure. Uh, I've ridden in trucks and I'm pretty sure their wheels aren't round because you bounce around a lot. So uh, that's the very uh, first step right there. Then um, we're going to start with the bumpers. And I would use a pinky finger, but for my little kids, I tell them to use their index finger again. And we're going about even with the, um, with the wheel right there. And we're just going to make a U shape around our finger. Just like that, a little U shape. And this is going to be the fender on our old truck. You can make them as thick or as thin as you want, but the finger seems to be a pretty good measurement. And then hook that together over the top. There you go. So uh, I like teaching ag in the classroom because my students, some of them live in rural areas and some of them don't, but a lot of them don't really understand where food comes from or that everything that we use, food and fiber, our clothing, our furniture, that some farmer had something to do with that. And so I like them to uh, have experiences that um, reinforce that information. Most of us are about four generations out of being farmers. It used to be that everybody had a farm, everybody had a garden, and you might barter your apples for somebody else's eggs, but everybody had some sort of agricultural project going on. Now they say 2%, maybe even a less than that, are raising all of the food and fiber for the entire world. And that's, uh, that's something we need to know. We're getting more specialized. We're getting more scientific about it. We, we have learned all these things along the way so that we can produce more food and fiber with fewer people, fewer, um, less land, that kind of thing. Let's go ahead and get these bumpers on here. So right here behind this, Cap, I'm going to put a rectangle. I didn't leave myself much room. That's going to be the back bumper of my truck. And up here, I like to curve the front bumper just a little bit. Next thing we're going to do is a running board and it goes right across the bottom here. So uh, trying to give you plenty of time to work along with me. Sometimes I talk too fast. Um, we're going to, after we do the running board, we need to make this a double line. It's just an echo line right here. I forgot to catch up down here. Uh, I think my tires are too small. Kind of a stretch limo of the, I'm just gonna make my tires bigger. This is why we keep it light till we get it right so that we can correct our mistakes as we go along. Okay, so for this next line, we're going to use the shape of our hand. And uh, sometimes I use my friend's hand to do this, but we're going to put our hand up here and then we're going to draw around the shape of that. So it goes up and over. On here, it might look like up, and over. And there's no reason that you couldn't just say, well, we're going to draw part of a square. That works as well. This is getting to be the cab of the truck. If we went halfway between these two hubcaps and then moved our pencil over just a smidge, then this will be the back of the cab. But you want the cab of the truck to be a little bit uh, smaller than the bed of the truck. And here we're just going to go up. That's not a very straight line, that's okay. We're going to go up about three finger spaces here and come over and here is the windshield of our truck. So here I am halfway between the two. I come over just a little bit. I go up about three finger spaces or a little more since this picture is larger. Bring it over. There's the cab of my truck. And if you wanted to, you could go ahead and put the window in here. Sometimes I get this too big or too small, and so I make this the window and draw the ex, uh, extra for the cab of the truck. But it's just an echo line. You're drawing the same line you drew before, but um, 
your tray theme inside it. So here, here's my echo line. You try to keep it parallel. That means the same distance here as it is here, as it is here, parallel the lines uh, echo each other. And let's go ahead and add a door handle. I like an oval door handle. Sometimes my kids want to do just a rectangle. And that's okay too. The uh, So the next thing we're going to add is the bed of the truck. And you want to start your bed just behind this window and it's a horizontal line. And you want to stop it where the bumper starts, something like that. And if you want to be really old fashioned, you have your tailgate sticking out a little bit, something like that. I like to put an extra rail on my, um, on the bed of my truck, it helps uh, give me something to tie down my veggies to. I'll show you just a bit uh, <laughs> the, the rails that one of my students puts on his truck because he likes the way it looks. Okay, so we have the horizontal line, we have a vertical line, we have the tailgate coming out the back, and we have a, uh, a rail on the bed of the truck. Okay, so the specialty crop organization has a grant and that's what they use to write the, uh, the book, the fruits and veggies and nuts, oh my. Uh, they use that grant to write that and it honors all of the, or gives information, I guess, educates us about all the different specialty crops in Oklahoma. Strawberries are in there, uh, peaches, watermelons, all different things. That's really good. So here is, let's see, I'm not sure where you can see this best. Here is the truck that my student drew. He put the wooden rails on the back. He put some kind of grill vents up here, headlights, and then he wrote his uh, ag country, ag company's name right there. Sometimes I have my students write their name here and then the year so that they have a copy of that. Kathleen. Yes. Can you, can you hold that a little bit closer or tip it? There was a glare on it. They can't see. Can you see that? Yes, much better. Now everyone can see a strike bed. Thank you. Um, I always tell my kids to keep their lines simple. Don't start adding shading. Draw really big because the next thing I want them to do is to go over their lines. I'm going to move this up close to go over your lines in crayon. And this is especially important with kindergartners and first graders because we're not very um, we're not very careful when we paint. And when you go over these lines in crayon and you press down pretty hard, I'm, I want them to get a nice, bold, thick black line. That crayon, because it's wax, it resists the watercolor paint. So it kind of helps the kids to stay in the lines when they go to paint. So here's one that we painted. So if you have paints at home, um, these are my favorite paints. They're called Lyra, L-Y-R-A, Lyra, and they are opaque tempera paints. They come with their own paintbrush. And um, it's double layers. They're, they're not cheap. I think they're 12 or $14 a, a thing. Like They're pretty spendy, but they last a long time. I had 600 kids use these last year and there's still lots of paint in there. And um, they have this beautiful mixing tray on this side so you don't have to, uh, so they don't mix in the containers. And if one gets kind of empty, like this paint's kind of empty, I can pull it out and replace it. Or um, if I only want them to use warm colors, then I could pull out all the blues and greens and blacks and browns and just have my red, oranges, and yellows in here. You can pull them out and rearrange them. And it comes with a tube of white paint that I always take out because they'll squirt it into the layers. And when I, um, when I paint with my kids, I put a ramekin cup, the little plastic cups like you get ketchup in at McDonald's. I put that one on the table for each child. 
and then uh, they get to uh, trade it out. They can go and refill it as they need to, but we only fill it half full. So they have, I don't know, maybe an eighth or a sixteenth of a cup of water that they're working with. That way, when, when they spill it, because you know they're going to, when they spill it, it's not a big mess. And then to wet their paints to get started, I have these little spray bottles and I put a drop of essential oils. I'm not even sure that it matters, but I usually use purification or thieves or something like that. Just a drop, shake it up and then spray it because these paints are activated by water. And if you don't get them wet, they're not going to work. So I walk around, spray all the tables. The essential oil is just because I put these up and sometimes they sit in the classroom over the weekend and um, mold will grow on tempera paint if you put them away wet. And so uh, I, I like to have a little something in there to keep them from getting uh, molded. So once you get them wet, the kids still have to dri dip their brush into the water. And I didn't bring a cup of water in. So we dip it in and we swirl it around. And then as we pull it out, we pull the brush out and we scrape the edge of the brush so it's not dripping wet, getting paint everywhere or getting water everywhere. And we never do this because if you do this with your brush, you're going to spatter your artwork, your friend's artwork, your friend, maybe your teacher. She gets really grumpy if you do that. So we don't ever tap our brush. We just swirl it off and then we scrape all the water back into our container. So we're nice, neat painters, nice, neat artists. That also makes the end of our brush get a beautiful little point on it. So I have a wet brush, I go into my paint, and again, I'm petting it like I'm petting a little teeny tiny puppy, uh, really nice and soft, always in the same direction. We don't want our paint brushes to get uh, Muppet hair, we don't want them to have bad hair. So now my paint brush is at a point, and um, it's got some paint on it. The paint is thick like mud. It's not like water, it's thick like mud. And then I can go in and begin to paint. And remember, we are painting inside that crayon, so it's going to stay a little better. And Kathleen, what's the name of the paint that you're using again? They're Lyra, L-Y-R-A, and it's opaque tempera paint. And I like it better than watercolors because the colors are really bright, but the being opaque, they're not transparent like watercolors. So you get a bolder color. And then after this dries, and uh, here, I'll show you on this one over here. So after this dries, if I wanted to go in, I just stuck my paintbrush in my water cup like the one I'm drinking. Um, after this dries, I can go in with my highlight color or my shadow color and I can uh, paint over it. My brush is still a little wet. Let me see if I can get this one on here. I can't believe I just got paint in my water. I can believe that I do that all the time. You should not keep your drinking cups near your art materials. It's very, very dangerous. We love all the great pointers that you're giving us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> For real, not just that one. Good. These, um, these paints are, are really safe. They're, um, the kids can lick them and occasionally, I think they do, they lick other things. So um, I don't ever use anything in my classroom that kids couldn't eat without dying. I don't tell them that. But uh, you just never know what they're going to put in their mouth or what they're going to do with stuff. So uh, they are safe to use other than 600 kids have used them. They have a couple of germs on them. So uh, this is the lightest color that's in here. It's actually a pink, but we use it for a highlight. So I want this hood to be highlighted and I can go in here with my white. Here's my white going over the bumper and over here, maybe even some on the tires. But after it's dry, I can paint another layer on here. And instead of mixing in like watercolors would, it sets on the top. And so you can actually see the design. And so I think, I just think they're a lot more fun because of that. So if you are teaching virtually, like we could be doing, who knows? Um, you can also use 
food coloring. So, so my students, most of them don't have art materials at home. So we use the paper from our mom's bills. And I tell them that all year long. And if you don't have paper at home and you want to make art, ask your mom if you can have the envelopes left over from the bills because they have all those cool designs and patterns in there. You can cut them out, put them together. You can draw with marker on them. But if you don't have paint, you can also use, see if I can get one that's not sticky. You can also use food coloring. I like to put it into an ice tray to contain it. And I even put, a drop of dish soap in before I put the food coloring in because when I was practicing this I got food coloring on my hand and it would not come off so um, my tempera paint the only one of these that stains is the hot pink I don't know why that one's so bad but it stains all the rest of those they wash right out but the food coloring did not wash out but you can use the food coloring with a um, q-tip and so I started, this is the Christmas truck, and I put some brown on my Q-tip and I made my stick. And now I can go in here with my green. You don't need your Q-tip too awful wet. Oh, see, I got it all over my hands already. And then I start at the top and just make, it looks like little eyelashes coming out. And of course, these are the tree branches. I'm gonna pretend like this is really green. It appears that I got blue. And we're gonna put tree branches on the other side. And my kids will get upset because their tree's not even and then they come out here and they make it bigger. <laughs> Pretty soon you have some giant mess in the back of the truck. But that's okay because Christmas trees look really weird until we get them home and get our decorations on them. The, uh, one of the funny things that my kids always do, and it does look cute, is once they get their Christmas tree in here, they put the star on the tree. And we talk about that, you know, that's usually the last thing you do after you've decorated the whole tree is crowning it with the star that they want the star on it while it's in the truck, and that's just fine. They can put decorations on it if they want to. It doesn't bother me a bit. So this is our Christmas truck. You could write Merry Christmas 2020 on it if you wanted to. Um, this is our pumpkin truck. And there is a really fun activity in the fruit book, um, in the fruit and nuts, oh my book. I hope I don't run copyright rules or something by calling it the wrong name. But it's called the Abstract Crop Art, I think. Abstract Specialty Crop Art. And you draw a pumpkin or whatever kind of produce you want to draw. And then they do zentangles or designs, line designs inside that. And that would be something they could put in the back of this truck. But you can also just draw a pumpkin. And uh, to draw a pumpkin, you can start by tracing around your thumb, or you can just make an oval. I like really big pumpkins. So here's my oval, and I'm going to start not at the very point and not at the side of my pumpkin, but towards the top of that oval. And you're going to start there and make a letter C. So here it comes out. And when it gets to the bottom here where the truck is, stop your line. If this were sitting on the table, then you would go ahead and make that C come all the way down. You would complete the C all the way around. But we are showing the overlap of the pumpkin being inside the truck. So the truck is overlapping the bottom of the pumpkin. And of course, we want our pumpkin to be big and fat and round. So there's another C. And you know, I've still got some space in my trunk. There we go. Um, I shouldn't say that with my back to you. Anyway, um, you just, you want to fill up your truck with that pumpkin. It looks like the ones they have up in, is it Nova Scotia, where they have 
the pumpkins and they cut the tops of them and they get inside them, they row them across the, uh, the bay. They have a big pumpkin race with the biggest pumpkins and they have security guards that protect their pumpkins. There's great YouTube videos on it. And then uh, I'm going to come up here and put a triangle up here and it can be as simple as a witch's hat triangle. I mean, just a triangle or you can get really curvy on it. And from that triangle, this is our stem. And from that stem, we're gonna have curly cues. Now, when I draw pumpkins with my kids, we, that's a really good time to talk about shading and highlights. And uh, so we start by coloring in yellow. Apparently I'm going to paint it. I had intended on doing markers. But we start by coloring in yellow on the part of the pumpkin that sticks out the most because this is where the light's going to hit it. So all along here, we're gonna color yellow. Oh, that's gonna drip. But the part that sticks out, you make it yellow or a light color. If you're doing a teal colored pumpkin, you might just make it white or light blue but uh, the lighter part sticks out. And then you can go in with your orange or even sometimes we even use red and you go into these deep lines and you fill in those deep lines. It's not really a good idea to use your markers on wet paint, by the way. It's Kathleen, we yeah. had a question in the chat and I thought it was a good one. Um, can this tempura paint, can it be used on canvas? They said this would be good to paint on canvas, do a Christmas gift for parents. If I was doing a canvas, uh, yes, it can be used on canvas. Canvas has a tooth to it, like it's um, a fabric that's woven together and then has paint on it, so it's got some texture. I would probably just go straight for the acrylics. They're pretty cheap and the little 50 cent things from Walmart. And um, a canvas, because it's considered more permanent, and that tooth of the fabric that you're painting on, I would probably work for acrylics instead. You could do, um, here, I'll show you. I also always make my students, if they're painting, now my pre-Ks, they get to use easels, but when we're painting, we always work flat because paint drips and that makes them cry. But see, you can get a nice good color on here. Oops. But um, this is a water activated paint. So if you're going to paint it with, um, if you're going to use this on a canvas, you would have to clear coat it afterwards because somebody can walk by and, you know, smear it or something horrible. So you'd have to clear coat it if you do that. Did that answer the question? I think so. Thank you so much, Kathleen. All right, so um, on our pumpkins, we would want to um, put in our highlights and put in our shadows or not. That's up to you. For uh, summertime, there are so many wonderful things that we can put in our pickup trucks. And um, I like to use the calendar for uh, the Ag in the Classroom calendar. And uh, it, I have it pulled up, but I don't know how to switch screens. Anyway, um, the, for August, the vegetable of the month is a yellow squash. And so you could paint or create yellow squash and put that in your pickup. Um, the fruit of the month is the watermelon. I'm going to show you an easy way to draw a watermelon. There you go. And um, then this is also when corn harvest starts. And I had no plain construction paper here, so I used uh, some yellow construction paper. But in the fruits, veggies, and that's oh my book, they use bubble painting you know, the bubble bubble wrap and you put the yellow paint on that and then you press it down and it gives you the texture for the corn on the cob and it was super cute. And then you can use the kids handprint 
trace around their hand, uh, have them color it green. They could use crayons, markers, paint, whatever you wanted. And then when they cut it out, that can be the uh, husk shucks the, on the corn. Husk, it could be the husks on the corn. And again, that could also go in your truck, very large. Uh, let's see. going to show you how to do a watermelon and I'm just going to do it on this truck up here even though I haven't finished painting it. So I want my watermelon in here and I'm going to start with a big oval. It's just going to stick out the back like that big oval and then from that oval I echo this line. Remember we're going super light with our pencil and then I echo this line. And then if you wanted to, you could echo this line as well, but you don't really have to. And then when you go in here with your, with your green paint, you could paint it yellow first if you wanted to, but you can go in here with your green paint and you do a zigzaggedy line. I don't know, for some reason that's not sticking. I don't know if I would use this on But a zig zigzaggy line, and then in between, you're going to do a different color of green. And it gives you the uh, beautiful watermelons with the, the stripedy watermelon. See my drips. Yeah, it's just, it takes a lot of paint to get down in the crevices on this, um, on the canvas. I would definitely use the acrylic paint, not, uh, not the tempera. There we go. So there's your watermelon. And you could, if you wanted to, it, it wouldn't make sense that a truck would be driving around with an open watermelon. But if you wanted to, then you could also do another slice this way. Echo that, echo that. And you could make your colored watermelon, your, the inside of the watermelon also. Trucks probably don't drive around with that sticking out the back, but. But the kids would enjoy painting the inside. I don't know, we like painting red better than we like painting green. Something along those lines. Now, if you do a um, calendar in your classroom, you can make all of the specialty crops ahead of time, grapes for uh, Green grapes are in, uh, they're the fruit of the month for uh, March, I believe. And this is another one of the fruits, nuts, veggies, oh my book. <laughs> and um, you just take the lid of a marker and you can use a stamp pad or I just dipped it in some paint and stamped my grapes and then drew a little leaf. You could also use the handprint of kids. They love that. Um, my favorite. <laughs> Um, one of my favorite kindergartners is uh, he, he's a little hyper, but if I paint his hand and then press it down on paper, he will do anything for me. And I'll have him go clean things up or help somebody with something. And he'll say, are you going to paint my hand? Yes. Almost every day he comes to class not to paint something on his hand, but he, he needs that. Uh, so uh, you, you could do these and you could hang them up as your border on your um, calendar page and then when it's the vegetable of the month and you can pull it down and put it in your pickup truck. Sorry, this is like crying paint. I can't handle it. So sad. This is another way to do the little truck. And I cut out a rectangle here and I would just cut this in strips. I would take my red construction paper and I would do two inch strips 
going across. Okay, so you turn the construction paper portrait and or vertical. And then I would cut two inch strips going up so that I would have the strips. And then the kids can cut off the corner if they want it to be rounded. And then uh, this one, I would do three squares. I take one of these strips and do three squares, like one, two, three. And out of that, we would do the, um, the hood, no, the cab, and then the fenders. And when I do tires, I give my kids a square of paper like this, and I say, cut off the corners, but just cut off the smallest corner you can cut. And so we cut off all the corners, the smallest ones we can cut. Well, now we have more corners. I say, okay, just cut off those corners, but just the smallest little corner that you can cut. Helps if you stick your tongue out just a little bit. And eventually you end up with a circle that you can use for your tire. Now, sometimes those kids are going to cut off great big, corners because that's the smallest one that they can cut. And so as they figure out what they're doing, they're going to end up with um, itty bitty tires. And that's okay. If you feel like that kid needs to have itty bitty tires, then just leave it at that. If you think that they need a bigger tire, then you say, oh, well, let's use that as the middle of your hubcap and we'll make your tires out of another color. Um, I actually did this wrong. I tried to do the hubcaps first because then you can put that hubcap in the middle of the other and uh, you can cut out around that, but it doesn't really matter. But here's the fun part right here. Uh, it's these little brads and these things are the greatest thing ever invented um, if you're a kindergartner because um, they're stabby and they're bendy and they make things move. So I give them each two and I pass them out and I count them out so that they can't say, he only gave me one when they lose one, because they do. And if they lose their brad, they just have to glue their wheels on. So um, I didn't tell you how to do the uh, hubcap. Sorry, let's do that first. So the hubcap also starts off as a square. Like this and instead of cutting um, all of the corners well the first time you do you can cut no you don't cut all the corners you just cut two corners like that and the bottom of it stays squared off so that when you put your tire on there it um, sorry getting in front of myself you're going to glue this half circle onto the truck. You've got to glue that onto the truck. Then you're going to use your brad to go into your paper, your, into the middle of the wheel, and then into the middle of the, uh, the hubcap as well. No. Uh, this thing, fender. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Okay, so my kids have a struggle getting that little pointy thing through the paper. So we take a ballpoint pen and we put it where we're going to, we make a little tiny dot where we're going to make the hole. Just a little tiny dot like that. And then we go over that little tiny dot about 400 times. Um, actually, whenever you go over it, you can feel it when it breaks through, but that ballpoint pen, because the ink is kind of wet and the pen's kind of pointy, it actually makes a hole through your, uh, through the paper so that uh, you can put your pokey thing through that hole without stabbing your finger. And then we get it through the big hole. This big thing's going to be glued onto the paper. There's a tall leg and a short leg, and they pull the tall one out to the side, pull the other one out, and now they have a truck that has rolly wheels, and they just love these things. Crazy about those. Um, what else do I need to tell you about? Told you about the calendar. 
Told you about fruits and veggies, oh my. Well, I have one more thing for you. And um, if, you, if you don't want to do produce, it was not in the specialty crop book, but you could do uh, chickens because they're my favorite. And in the fruits, veggies, nuts on my book, there's a poem, it's by Jack Proletsky. And if you have never met him, he is a hoot. I actually think he passed away a couple of years ago, but he is a hoot. And his poetry is all really um, funny and makes you think, and it's uh, really cute. But this one is called, Last Night I Dreamed of Chickens. Last night, I dreamed of chickens. There were chickens everywhere. They were standing on my stomach and they were nesting in my hair and they were pecking at my pillow. They were hopping on my head. They were ruffling up their feathers and they raced around my bed. There, they were on the chairs and the tables and they were on the chandelier. They were roasting in, roosting, not roasting, no roasting. They were roosting in the corners. They were clucking in my ear. There were chickens, chickens, chickens. So as far as I could see, when I woke up today, I noticed there were eggs on top of me. And if you wanted to, you could add um, chickens to your truck or eggs. You could put a cow in your truck. You can add anything into your truckload of possibilities that you want to add. And that's all I have for you. I think, I think all of the uh, teachers would agree that we all wish we could have been there in person with you. So I'm going to show you just so you know. See, I it's did there. try. Yeah. I can't wait to do it at home with my little ones. If anyone else drew a truck and would like to share your artwork with us, if you'll use the um, raise your hand, I can see that and I can let you have um, the ability to share your picture for a little bit. So if anyone drew a truck, I'm sure Kathleen would like to see that. I would so much love to see that. Is that better? Yes, ma'am. wonderful. Okay. It's wonderful. She even colored it. Look at the <laughs> shading inside in the deep parts of the pumpkin. Cynthia, that's Fun. fabulous. Thank you. What grade do you teach? Um, I'm gifted. It's six through eight, but I mean, I loved it, so I know they will. <laughs> and you are definitely gifted, so that's great. Yes, your sixth through eighth graders will love it, and they'll get real fancy with their trucks. They'll, you'll get some low riders in there, and uh, uh, the four wheel drives, and smokestacks, and they'll, they'll get real fancy with their trucks. Uh, uh, thank you very much, I appreciate that. On the um, watermelon, on the, uh, the monthly calendar, there's always a piece of artwork. And as an art teacher, I really focus on that, but it's also a good writing prompt. And for um, August, watermelon was the fruit of the month. And there's a Frida Kahlo painting of watermelon that is absolutely stunning. And I had never seen it until the Agatha Classroom um, website. I, and I've done lots of Frida Kahlo research and projects, and but I've never seen her watermelons and it, it's just beautiful. So check it out. Just going to echo. Um, Kathleen, you did awesome. I have a text ready to send you telling you that as well. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. It was fun. And the other thing for all the art teachers that have joined us today, I'm not sure how many are actual art teachers and how many are classroom teachers, but for everyone, we do have an Ag and Art section under the resources. So be sure to check that out as well. We are blessed in Oklahoma. We've got many fabulous art teachers, but for all of you that are on, don't forget about um, checking, checking our website for contest and other opportunities that we have. Those, those change throughout the year and, and we try to um, share other people's contests as well. So everyone be sure to keep an eye on that and like us on Facebook.